Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw for Insider Travel Report, and I'm here today with Craig Thomas, Vice President of Sales uh, for the Americas for Qatar Airways. And obviously, Qatar is really in the news these days with the FIFA World Cup, and Qatar Airways is highly regarded, one of the best airlines in the world, uh, let alone the Middle East. And we wanted to talk to Craig uh, about what was going on with Qatar, especially uh as it's gearing up, obviously, for the imminent FIFA World Cup, which is just weeks away, if not days away, actually. Uh, let me start, Craig. Uh, first of all, Qatar Airways has obviously, as I said, been gearing up for the FIFA World Cup. Uh, it's Qatar 2022. What has that preparation looked like? This has been an event that's been over 10 years in the making, uh, but it's really been over the past kind of 18 months that it's really been the ramp up in terms of uh, Qatar Airways readiness um, for the World Cup. Um, so that has basically you know, impacted on us on a number of different levels. The one being, uh, you know, producing content for sales. So, you know, having to put together packages, uh, create distribution platforms for those packages through the various websites. Uh, it's also meant us having to make sure that our network and our flying program is ready to welcome the 1.5 million plus visitors that are expected to attend uh, or, or to visit Qatar as part of the FIFA World Cup. Right. Um, so we had to implement a number of various strategies to, to accommodate that. Uh, you know, this, incre this includes flying additional aircraft within the region and to key FIFA source markets, uh, as well as making significant changes to our operations in Doha, uh, specifically to accommodate an increasing number of Doha arrivals, as opposed to the regular number of transit passengers flying over the, the Doha mm -hmm. hub. Um, just as an example to show you the interest in, in Doha, uh, the initial booking interest in packages uh, was twice as high as the previous World Cup tournaments. So I think that speaks to the the level of excitement uh, you know, that, that spectators and, and, and fans have had in terms of booking Qatar, but also to the fact that this is the first time that the World Cup will be held in the Middle East. So that really is awesome. something quite special and something quite unique for the region. And, and you know, we're incredibly pleased to be welcoming uh, the, the World Cup for the first time to the Middle East. Uh, it's really going to be a game changer in terms of uh, global recognition of, you know, not only Qatar, but the Middle East region, uh, and also for those uh, surrounding countries, you know, in terms of having that access to a neighboring country for their own citizens and fans to be enjoying the World Cup live. Now, now I assume you've obviously added flights from all over the world uh, for this period, correct? Yeah, so we've had a just our flying program. Um, so the prioritization has been uh, serving those markets where there's anticipated demand coming through, uh, but also then adjusting the flying program to accommodate day uh, match day shuttles, which were right. operating from Dubai and Muscat. Uh, but particularly to or, or particular relevance to the Americas, uh, Latin America has been a strong performer for us. Um, so we are actually increasing our Sao Paulo service to three times a day and out of the USA um, over selected periods during the World Cup uh, our Dallas Fort Worth service will ramp up uh, to up to four flights per day on selected dates uh, and we'll also have additional frequencies out of Miami and Los Angeles to cater for some of this uh, this FIFA demand. Absolutely. That's that's until the United States gets uh, gets beaten out of the World Cup, and then maybe there won't be so many flights. But no, I'm, I'm kidding on that. We hope that they get farther than they have in most recent years. But we're actually happy just to be in it, to be honest with you. Um, let, let's talk a little well, bit. Well, and, and you know, the key thing is, you know, yeah, uh, I'm saying you, you've always got to have a backup team. So, you know, we hope that the U.S. will go very far, but we're confident that uh, – you know, most uh, U.S. fans have a backup team, and we're hoping that it's, it's Brazil or Latin American team to keep within the region. Uh, but we still expect that even if the U.S. Uh, does necessarily progress to the, the quarterfinals, semifinals, we still expect significant demand uh, from the U.S.A. Um, for the, the final stages of the game. Absolutely. Well, my backup team usually is England, but sometimes they don't get past certain stages. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I, I do adopt a team. And yeah, it's going to be an amazing event. 
uh, and really looking forward to watching it on television. I wish I was flying over with you uh, to see it. But let, let's talk a little bit about the future after this, uh, the, the FIFA World Cup. Uh, what is the future outlook and strategy for Qatar Airways? What's, what's your goal? Obviously, Doha has become a real hub for you uh, to serve the entire world. Yeah, look, you know, FIFA um, World Cup is just one part of the journey towards 2030. Um, our strategy is intrinsically aligned with the national vision of the state of Qatar, uh, where the goal is to establish Qatar as a world-class destination, welcoming more than 6 million uh, visitors per year by 2030. Um, so the next, you know, kind of eight years after World Cup will be um, leading towards that goal. Uh, that's really about, um, you know, capitalizing on the expansion of the narrative surrounding Qatar, being a destination within its own right, uh, you know, one that has a lot of attractions in terms of hospitality, tourism, business, but also meetings, conferences and events. Um, so, you know, we look forward to the next eight years, really capitalizing on the global positioning and awareness of Qatar, uh, and then us building on that, uh, particularly from a tourism perspective, uh, and continuing to really leverage the global uh, hub that uh, Qatar is for stopover traffic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so really providing that uh, bridge of access. Yeah, so obviously not only just as a hub, but also as a destination unto itself. Got Correct. It. Yeah. Now, uh, Qatar Airways has celebrated a number of recent anniversaries, as well as sort of many accolades and awards. You're getting a lot of recognition. How, how have you celebrated your recent successes? Yeah, so look, it's been a fantastic year for us. Uh, you know, you, people often say you're only as good as your, your last award. Um, <laughs> and we're incredibly fortunate that, uh, you know, with this year's airline ratings, airline of the year, um, you know, winning this award for an unprecedented seventh time, which we're incredibly proud of. You know, it really validates what we do in the market, uh, the integrity and the quality of our product. Um, but there's also some specific awards that uh, within that uh, that gamut that we uh, we're also particularly proud of, and that's you know being named the world's best business class, and, and that's okay. really um, a huge testament to our Q Suite product, which is which is innovative, which is very very unique to what we have. Um, you know, that's a product that we continue to roll out across the network, uh, and which uh, continues to be very very well received um, in a lot of the markets that it operates to. Uh, most recently, we won uh, the best long-haul airline and the best Middle Eastern airline uh, at the UK Business Travel Awards. Um, so, you know, further validation of the, uh, the investment that we have in, in the product and the consistency with which um, that, that product is deployed across our network. You know, awards are just one part of the equation. I think the other one is really about um, actual performance. Uh, you know, 2021, 2022, as we came out of, of COVID back into a, a more regularized operation, operational cycle, uh, we recorded net profit, a uh, record net profit of just over $1.5 billion. You know, and that for us is as good as an award because it's testament to the confidence that customers have in traveling with Qatar Airways. Right. You know, the fact that the trade um, you know, support us, that they have confidence in uh, putting their customers with us. You know, so that is in itself, you know, another award for us. The fact that you know we're able to we're able to deliver that that you know record profit um, based on the exceptional volume of customers we traveled and the huge resounding confidence in in traveling Qatar Airways from the customer, the traveling public, and the trade. No, and then you're well known for your business class. It really is an amazing. Uh, uh, I I I hear all good things about it now. Let's talk about next year. 2023 really is expected to be another busy year for travel because I think 2022 was pretty busy. And of course, for you, it was very busy because of the World Cup and everything else going on. Now, has Qatar Airways experienced any increase in demand for flights uh, you know, to and from the Americas? Um, because obviously with the FIFA Cup, yes, but uh, what are you seeing for next year? Yeah. So look, just, just to put it into perspective, we, we already operate more frequencies into the Americas than we did uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, you know, in fact, we launched two new services during the pandemic. We launched service into San Francisco and Seattle. So we're currently operating uh, up to 125 weekly flights uh, out of the Americas. 
Uh, you know, our operating schedule, um, you know, capitalizes on seasonal demand. Um, so we, we have a number of services that increase during the summer program, uh, particularly Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, at this stage, uh, we have the published schedule through uh, the summer of 2023. Okay. Um, we, we continue to review opportunities. Um, there will be some additional flying during the summer months. Um, but at this stage, you know, we're not adding any additional frequencies over above what's published um, at this stage. Yeah. So are there, there any, any, yeah, are there any new markets you kind of have an interest in in the Americas that you want to expand to possibly that you're not already in? Yeah, look, we, we continue expanding through our co-chair partners. You know, for us, our partnership strategy is an integral uh, part of our DNA here. Our partnerships with American Airlines, Alaska, and JetBlue allow us to expand into a lot of these uh, demand markets that we wouldn't be able to operate, you know, wide-bodied aircraft in or, uh, you know, our own operations. So for us, you know, that, that's a key focus right now is leveraging the strength of our partnerships in their, uh, in their markets, you know, and really making uh, the one-stop via a partner hub a proposition accessible to customers traveling from the USA. Well, I did want to follow up on your, your more, more, most recent one was your co-chair agreement with JetBlue. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is a, a partnership that continues to expand. Uh, we're incredibly proud of our longstanding relationship with JetBlue. Uh, as of uh, end of October 2022, uh, we've expanded our co-chair agreement with JetBlue. Um, so th this actually expands the Qatar Airways footprint for the JetBlue customers. So they now uh, co-chair on Qatar Airways to 11 new markets in eight new countries across wow. Africa and Asia via Doha. So that really brings the JetBlue customer the opportunity to travel to the likes of Bali, Phuket, uh, Jakarta, Harare, Cairo. Um, so really providing a, a more global uh, opportunity for the JetBlue customer to travel to. And of course, you know, when JetBlue finally finalizes the merger with uh, Spirit, you're gonna have a much larger carrier uh, here, here in the US to work with. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting. Absolutely. Now, uh, are there any other new partnerships that Qatar Airways has been working on? Yeah, so you know we've got the strength of, of airline partners in a number of our regions. Um, we've recently kind of expanded into the financial services partnership realm. Uh, so we've signed a global strategic agreement with Visa, uh, and this is part of a, an exclusive 10-year partnership uh, with Visa. This is going to allow us to expand our portfolio of co-branded uh, credit card payment initiatives okay. um, and really tap into the strength of Visa's global uh, program and their digital first approach, which they're running out to a number of key markets. Um, so we see this as being a, an integral partnership. You know, Visa is, um, you know, one of the largest payment platforms in the world. It's present in most of the markets we operate to. So we find that that's a very, very natural fit to, for us to partner with them. Uh, in terms of uh, kind of more sports related partnerships, uh, we've recently entered into a long-term global partnership uh, with the Ironman, um, the Ironman series. So oh, wow. uh, we, we will be sponsoring Ironman through the 2025 uh, program. Um, I'm certainly going to be watching as a spectator, not as a participant. <laughs> uh, but we really see this you're, as you're being not, a You're not currently in training, right? <laughs> you know, uh, not, not quite into three modes of transport. You know, I think <laughs> okay. uh, you know, swimming, running, and something a little bit beyond my, my reach. Um, but yeah, you know, we see that there's a complementary fit between Ironman participants, you know, in their pursuit for excellence uh, in whatever they do and what, what Qatar Airways does, uh, you know, constantly striving for excellence. Um, you know, so we will be partnering with Ironman on a number of global activations. Uh, we kicked this off earlier this year with activations they had in Washington, uh, Washington State uh, and in Maryland, very, very successful. Uh, and we will be working with them to bring value adds and, and certain benefits to Ironman participants and fans. That's great. No, that's true. We, we, we can watch. We don't, have to, we don't have to be part of the competition. That's great. Now, I did want to ask exactly. you, uh, I, you know, I we talked a little bit about uh, the onboard service product and we talked the business class. You've been recognized for that. But could you give us an update on uh, all what's going on with all your different classes of service? Anything new? 
Yeah, certainly. So we uh, we have three classes of service. Uh, first, business and economy. Um, at the moment, uh, first class is exclusively on our A380 aircraft, uh, which is primarily operating into Australia. Uh, so it's into Perth, Sydney, as well as a few rotations into Bangkok and London. Um, out of the Americas, it's a two-class product. It's our uh, Q-suite business class and our economy class product. Um, I think what we're particularly uh, exceptionally proud of in our economy product is it's an all-inclusive product. Um, so, you know, meals, uh, beverages, in-flight entertainment, you know, it really is a full-service proposition. Uh, we're exceptionally proud uh, of the um, the new menu we have on board uh, across the cabins celebrating the FIFA World Cup. Um, so our customers in both classes will see touch points that relate to the World Cup in terms of uh, of a bit of a fun factor in terms of the uh, the food and beverage service on board, um, you know, so that's uh, an area that we continue uh, we continue to invest in. Mm-hmm. Um, we are also looking at soft touches, you know, so things like uh, constantly re- renewing the maintenance kits on board, uh, and just looking at innovative ways to ensure that our customer experience, whether you're in the economy, business all first, uh, remains uh, you know world leading, world class and provides value for money at every price point. Well, it sounds great. And uh, now we, we go out to about 109,000 travel advisors in the US and a little bit in Canada. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to take note regarding uh, Qatar Airways, especially with regarding service uh, to and from the Americas? Yeah, look, uh, we're exceptionally proud of the fact that uh, we've had a huge expansion in Africa over the past two years. Uh, we've seen in Africa as being a very, very strong market from the Americas. Uh, it's really interesting during the pandemic, uh, there was a, a rapid increase in awareness from the Americas of, of Africa as a uh, leisure destination, you know, in terms of safaris, beaches, uh, you know, really unique cultural experiences. Um, so we're incredibly proud of the fact that one stop from the Americas to Doha, you know, we operate into over 30 uh, destinations in Africa. Uh, and with a lot of Asian markets now, now reopening uh, following the dropping of COVID protocols, uh, you know we're a very, very, um, very, very strong competitor in uh, to markets like Phuket and Bali, Denpasar, as well as the Maldives. So these traditional premium leisure markets, uh, you know, we have a very, very strong network and, and uh, operations into those markets, really providing very, very efficient one-stop from the Americas over Doha to these key leisure markets. No, that's great. And it, it is a really great way to get out to those Asian markets as well now, especially, as you said, uh, Southeast Asia, places like that are now uh, really opening up again. It's it, one of the last places. The only thing we have left, I think, is China. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll see what happens. There's a lot of rumors that's going to happen in the spring, but we'll see. Uh, where can travel advisors go to learn more about Qatar Airways and, and really how to work better with your airline? Absolutely. Uh, so look, the first point of reference is our website, uh, catalairways.com. Uh, I'd also encourage trade advisors to sign up for our trade portal uh, and the, the relevant uh, digital uh, opt-ins on emails there. Uh, we do use email as our first uh, point of contact with agents. The trade right. portal provides a wealth of information on anything from policies, procedures, and product. Uh, but we also use that to promote special offers uh, and announcements out to the trade. Uh, and then reach out to trade support and, and we'd be happy to put them in touch with either uh, the relevant account manager uh, or refer them to whoever within their organizations is the, uh, the custodian of the relationship with Qatar Airways. Fantastic. Well, uh, Craig, good luck with the upcoming uh, uh, World Cup and, and all the service you're going to provide to go in. It should be an exciting time, uh, both for the country and for your airline. And uh, hopefully we'll get a few good matches out of it. Uh, we'll see see how it goes. But again, thank you Absolutely. for Absolutely. We look forward to seeing the USA get, get through to the quarterfinals. That would that would that would help a lot, I think. It would definitely put Qatar even more on the map than it is now. And I think it's it's even going to be on the map very much so after this uh this tournament. So again, uh and, and hey, if you have any ki- tickets, uh I'm I'm around. So to just <laughs> and and I can even fly in your airline. How about that? Well, you know, today's the last day for sale. So if there is anybody that's looking for last minute tickets, uh, the shutoff is midnight tonight. So, oh, uh, good, good to know. Good to know. Time. 
Anyway, again, Craig, thank you so much for taking the time, and we look forward to hearing a lot more from Qatar Airways in the future. Um, I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.